You only need to take a quick look at the news headlines to realize that there seems to be an endless stream of health organizations currently giving advice about what to do and what to expect during this pandemic. WHO versus CDC. What do they actually do? And with so many official recommendations out there, who are we actually supposed to be listening to? You'd be forgiven for getting these two organizations mixed up, since there is a lot of overlap between them. Both the Center for Disease Control and the World Health Organization provide health recommendations based on expert advice, and they both work with partners, including each other, to coordinate and implement public health programs around the world. But they're very different in terms of how they're structured and how they go about putting their plans into action. And these differences have the potential to create confusion and conflict during a major health emergency. We've certainly seen this play out during the current COVID-19 pandemic. Think confusion over testing and conflicting early projections. But before we dive right into the drama between the CDC and the WHO, let's take a second to get familiar with these two public health giants and understand what they actually do. The CDC is a branch of the U.S. government's Department of Health and Human Services, and they answer to the U.S. President, Congress, and the courts. The CDC is domestically oriented, meaning that their focus is on health issues that affect Americans both at home and abroad, but they still do extensive international work and have offices around the world. The CDC was created in 1946 to wage war on mosquitoes. Their first mission was to prevent malaria outbreaks in the South from spreading across the country. They were given just $10 million and 400 employees to undertake this ambitious goal, but once it was achieved, CDC founder Dr. Joseph Mountain pushed to extend the responsibilities to all communicable diseases. Under his visionary leadership, the CDC grew from a small, insignificant agency to become the U.S.'s premier health promotion, prevention, and preparedness agency. Unlike the CDC, the WHO is a non-governmental organization that does not answer to any one government. Instead, WHO is governed by the World Health Assembly, a group of health ministers from WHO member states who meet once a year to set policies for the organization. The WHO is internationally oriented. They work primarily with the United Nations system, but are also very active all across the globe. The WHO was established in 1948, and we commemorate the birth of this important organization every year when we celebrate World Health Day on April 7th. The WHO now has 194 member states across six different regions. There are 150 WHO offices around the world for their more than 7,000 employees, including medical doctors, public health specialists, scientists, economists, and administrative staff. The most obvious difference between the CDC and the WHO is that the CDC is a branch of the United States government, while the WHO is a non-governmental organization. Both organizations play an advisory role in public health. But the CDC's status as a governmental agency gives them some additional power to actually take action during an emergency, at least within the U.S. Another major difference between the two organizations is that the CDC relies on their own internal experts when making recommendations, while WHO bases their recommendations on the advice of a panel of independent experts from across their member states. Despite their differences, WHO and the CDC actually do work very closely together in the interest of global public health. The U.S. is a member of the WHO's Pan American Health Organization, and the WHO Regional Office for the Americas is located in Washington, D.C. The CDC is also part of the WHO's Global Influenza Surveillance and Response Team, or GISRS, which was established in 1952 in an effort to keep tabs on the ever-changing influenza virus. The goal of the GISRS is to reduce the impact of flu-related diseases through effective vaccines that contain currently circulating strains of the virus. The GISRS holds vaccine composition meetings twice a year to make recommendations on which strains to include in vaccines for the next flu season. The U.S. has earned a seat at the table for those meetings because the CDC's influenza division serves as the largest of six global WHO collaborating centers for surveillance, epidemiology, and control of influenza. These collaboration centers are vital to virus surveillance efforts. They gather and analyze information and samples from more than 140 national influenza centers around the world to track influenza trends and help WHO make appropriate recommendations for vaccines and other strategies. This is a great example of how governmental health agencies like the CDC collaborate directly with the WHO in the interest of public health, both at home and around the world. While both organizations work together to determine the best strategies, in the end, the WHO can only make recommendations based on the information they've gathered and the advice of their members. It's ultimately up to individual governments and their health agencies, like the CDC, to decide the best course of action for their own country and to put those plans into motion. 
Ok, so now that we understand how these organizations are set up, what do they actually do? The CDC's mission statement is to work 24-7 to protect America from health, safety and security threats, both foreign and in the US, whether diseases start at home or abroad, are chronic or acute, curable or preventable, human error or deliberate attack. The CDC fights disease and supports communities and citizens to do the same. The CDC focuses on three major priorities, pandemic preparedness, eliminating disease, and ending epidemics. They do extensive research on new and mutated germs and are very active in the field of drug-resistant bugs. Since this trend is a huge threat to human health both in the US and around the world, the CDC also takes on chronic health conditions like cancer and diabetes and non-disease epidemics like the opioid crisis, since drug addiction and chronic health issues rob Americans of a full life. For an example of the CDC in action, let's look at the current opioid crisis in the US. More than 70% of all drug overdose deaths in 2018 involved opioids, often prescription ones. To tackle this major domestic public health issue, the CDC has created checklists that doctors can use when considering prescribing opioids and providing guidelines for statewide opioid monitoring programs. They also do extensive public outreach to raise awareness about dangers of opioid drugs. The CDC does similar outreach work around other public health issues like smoking, diabetes, and contagious diseases. But in the end, it's up to individual states to implement and manage the strategies recommended by the CDC. The WHO's mission statement, Better Health for Everyone Everywhere, may be more catchy than the CDC's, but its simplicity understates the massive challenge they're taking on. Whereas the CDC mainly focuses on keeping Americans healthy, the WHO's vision is to improve the health of every single person in the world. The WHO has a broader focus than the CDC, since they're concerned about all areas of global health, not just diseases. WHO programs are in place all over the world to address global issues like clean water and sanitation, universal healthcare systems, and quality healthcare for children, pregnant women, elderly people, and the disabled. That said, disease initiatives are a huge part of the WHO's mandate. According to the WHO's research, up to 70% of all deaths worldwide are the result of chronic diseases like cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. Chronic diseases are a huge threat to human health and longevity, but communicable diseases that can spread from person to person are a constant threat and a major focus of the WHO. When it comes to communicable diseases and pandemics, the WHO works very closely with their member states' governmental agencies, like the CDC, to complete research and analysis, decide on recommendations, and implement programs to fight the disease. The WHO is also very hands-on during pandemics and other health emergencies, playing a vital role by creating and distributing preparedness guidelines, tracking and monitoring outbreaks, and ensuring safe delivery of essential health services and equipment to fragile areas. One of the best examples of the WHO at work is their role in eradicating smallpox. For nearly 15 years, WHO spearheaded the global fight against the smallpox virus, leading the charge on vaccination campaigns, virus surveillance, and prevention measures. Their hard work paid off, and in 1980, smallpox was the first disease to be declared eradicated on a global scale. The WHO does a lot of on-the-ground work, especially in less developed countries, but they don't have the same power that governmental agencies like the CDC have to force countries to adhere to their recommendations. They work closely with their member states to come to a consensus about the best approach to tackling global health emergencies, but their members are under no obligation to follow the WHO's recommendations. Not only is their goal of better global health extremely ambitious, but in most cases they have to accomplish it by convincing people and governments to choose to listen to their advice. No easy task in today's highly politicized world. Now that we understand the basic differences between the two organizations, let's take a look at an example of them in action and compare the WHO versus the CDC in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's important to remember that the WHO and the CDC are partners in the fight against COVID-19. They may not always agree on everything, but they are both working toward the same goal of keeping the world healthy and safe. When it comes to COVID-19, there are plenty of things that the WHO and the CDC do agree on. Both organizations have made it clear that social distancing and frequent hand washing are currently the only effective ways we have of fighting the spread of COVID-19, at least until a vaccine becomes available. Both the CDC and the WHO are providing guidelines for preventing and treating COVID-19 directed at healthcare workers, travelers, businesses, and the general public. 
The main goal for both the CDC and WHO is to raise awareness about COVID-19 and spread the word about what we can do as individuals and as countries to help contain it. There have been plenty of disagreements too. Perhaps the most notable is the drama surrounding the COVID-19 testing kits. On January 17th, WHO published protocols with instructions for manufacturing COVID-19 tests based on research from Germany. That very same day, a top US health official announced that the CDC had already developed an early version of their own test not based on the WHO's protocols. By February 6th, the WHO had shipped more than 250,000 tests to more than 70 labs around the world. Meanwhile, the US was struggling with defective tests, creating a huge backlog of cases awaiting testing. WHO spokesman Tariq Jaserovic confirmed to CNN that the WHO had not provided any tests to the US, but he made it clear that this was not an intentional slight. In fact, the US doesn't ordinarily rely on the WHO's test since they have the capacity to develop and manufacture their own diagnostic tests, leaving more of the WHO's resources available for countries who need them. The US has finally been able to start testing for COVID-19 in every state, but valuable time was lost and tensions are still high between the two health organizations. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the US's top infectious disease doctor, was asked if the US should have used the WHO tests. He responded, if you look back at Monday morning quarterback, it would have been nice to have had a backup. But what the CDC has done over many, many years when we have things like this is to develop their own test, which is always a really good test. Whenever the world is faced with a crisis, there will always be conflicting information and opinions. Your best bet is to check the WHO and CDC websites regularly to see exactly what they're saying. Review their information and pay special attention to the things that they do agree on. When they do conflict, you should look to your local government or health organization to confirm which guidelines apply to you. So there you have it, WHO versus CDC. Between the WHO's global network and the CDC's on-the-ground research, both these organizations are vital to the current fight against COVID-19 and to global health in general. Although they complement each other and even work together, they are very different, but at least now you actually know what they do. Now be sure to check out COVID-19 versus H1N1 swine flu. How do they compare? Or maybe you'll like this other video instead.